Second only to the RAV4, the Mazda CX-5 continues to surge in a segment that only gets more popular as time rolls on. Offering a stylish and almost premium alternative to the rest of the set, it's easy to see why the CX-5 is as popular as it is. That fact might be even more evident in the 2021 Mazda CX-5 Max Sport, one step up from the base model. This time around, we're testing the 2WD petrol variant. It's not just the RAV4 nipping at the CX-5's heels either. Long-standing segment stalwart the Honda CR-V is still there, as are compelling options from Nissan, Kia, Hyundai, Volkswagen and even MG. It's a crowded segment, one that is effectively the new battleground for Australian family buyers. It's a common sight to find a dual cab and a medium SUV in driveways around the suburbs. As such, the fight for the hearts and wallets of Australian buyers is fierce. The Max Sport sits above the base base Max and runs the same mechanical underpinnings, but with some added equipment. LED headlights and fog lights are standard, along with LED taillights, rain-sensing wipers, and 17-inch alloy wheels. The price for our tester starts from $36,490 before on-road costs. The CX-5 range starts from $31,190 and tops out at $52,380, both before on-road costs. The CX-5 isn't the sharpest or edgiest medium SUV in the segment, but its status as the second most popular in the segment behind the RAV4 is evidence that the Australian buying public likes what it sees. While design isn't necessarily a popularity contest, it's hard to argue with the stylish figure the CX-5 cuts regardless of which angle you're looking at it from. Inside the cabin, the Max Sport gets dual-zone air conditioning, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror and push-button start, along with robust-looking cloth trim and manual seat adjustment. The leather-trimmed steering wheel adds an ever, so slight air of premium to what is the sharper end of the pricing spectrum. This is undoubtedly a comfortable cabin for long or short-haul driving. An important factor for the family buyer. The cloth seats look to be hard-wearing and are comfortable, and the design touches, stitching, switchgear, plastic trim and soft touch surfaces all feel a level above the price point. While there are some touch points that are a little harder than CX-5 variants further up the tree, that's to be expected and is common to most models at this price point. Storage is catered to neatly also, with bottle holders in the large door pockets, a reasonable center console bin, cup holders that don't get in the driver's way, a hinge pocket above your head for sunglasses, and a shelf for your phone ahead of the shift lever. Where the medium SUV segment does get tricky for families is into the second row. While vehicles like the Honda CR-V have more room than most, the CX-5 is tight if you have taller teenagers in the family. Behind my six-foot driving position, you can fit another six-footer, but you wouldn't want that person to have to sit there for more than an hour or so. Still, for around town duties, second row comfort is solid. In the second row, you get plenty of headroom, a deep glass house with broad visibility, air vents, and two USB points for the kids to charge their devices. The center armrest flips down and features cup holders and a small storage bin. Boot space is par for the course too, with 442L with the second row in use and a sturdy luggage cover. That cover rises up with the tailgate to move out of your way, smart, and the second row can be dropped in a 40-20-40 split fold. There are levers at the rear that make this an easy move and fast as well. A full-size spare under the cargo floor is a vital inclusion for road tripping owners. Proprietary satellite navigation is standard, which will assist those of you who'd rather not rely on your smartphone. There's also an 8.0-inch LCD, sometimes, touchscreen, but we'll get to that in a minute. A six-speaker audio system runs DAB, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. One omission is the lack of a digital speedo, but with that said, the analog gauges are neatly executed and visible. To the point on the touchscreen. The older MZD system is starting to feel dated, but it does what it needs to do without issue. Where it does need a change is the methodology behind controlling it. At rest, you can use the touchscreen, but once moving you need to revert to the completely incongruous rotary dial. Yes, you can work it out, but we're also acclimatized to using touchscreens now, it just makes more sense to more people to have that system working at all times. Our CarPlay connection was faultless throughout, and the MZD system is mostly sharp enough to respond. Sometimes it seems to take a breath, but that pause is not so long that it is annoying either. The Bluetooth connection also provides a solid alternative if smartphone mirroring isn't something you want or need to be using. As you'd expect from Mazda, safety has been comprehensively catered to. 
There's lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control, a rear view camera, rear parking sensors, and a tire pressure monitoring system. Six airbags are standard, along with two isofix points and three top tether points. The CX-5 was rated at the full 5-star ANCAP level back in 2017. Mazda's range is covered by a 5-year, unlimited kilometer warranty, with services required every 12 months 10,000 kilometers. For the average Aussie buyer that means a service every 6 months or so. Across the first 50,000 kilometers, the cost of those services, as per Mazda's capped price scheme ranges from $330 to $360, with a few small costs for cabin air filters and brake fluid when required. Compared to the bulk of the competitor set, the running costs for the CX-5 are right where we'd expect them to be. The naturally aspirated 2.0-liter, four-cylinder petrol engine is par for the 2WD course in this segment really, generating 115 kilowatts and 200 Nm, and while there are more powerful offerings from other manufacturers, they come with an associated climb and cost. The ADR fuel claim on the combined cycle is 6.9 L100 km, and on test we used an indicated 9.8 L100 km. While most of the segment hovers around a similar fuel number, the hybrid RAV4 blows everything out of the water as the segment benchmark. As you'd expect from a Mazda of any kind, there's a sporty edge to the way it feels from behind the wheel. Stop-start works snappily enough not to be intrusive, and not to leave us wanting to switch it off constantly either. While the engine does need to rev out to really get the CX-5 cranking, it doesn't mind doing that and never sounding like it's gasping for air. Both around town and on the highway, the engine does the job asked of it pretty easily, even though you do feel like a bit more grunt might be welcome. It's not that the CX-5 is slow by any means, more that others do it a little easier. The sporty, sometimes raspy engine note is a little at odds with the refinement elsewhere in the CX-5. Things like the ride quality and cabin refinement feel a step above the asking price, but the engine note and intrusion into the cabin don't. It's a minor gripe, but a gripe nonetheless. The engine is well matched by the smoothness of the gearbox, which once again puts forward the case for less ratios and a torque converter. It's smooth and effective around town at any speed, and it does its work with relative ease. The sporting credentials are aided by responsive and meaty steering, which could easily be controlling the front wheels of a much sportier vehicle than a medium SUV, but to be fair, we expect that from Mazda. There's MX-5 DNA and smarts in there somewhere isn't there? While the right airs toward the firmer side of the segment, it's never uncomfortable, harsher crashy. Mazda has struck an impressive balance between insulation and performance here, and it's a balance that makes for an enjoyable drive around town. There's little doubt as to why the CX-5 is a favorite with so many Australian buyers. While the Toyota RAV4 maintains its place at the head of the medium SUV table, the CX-5 still runs a competitive second overall. This is a tough segment, too, with no room for mediocrity. That the CX-5 still competes as hard as it does in the face of newer competition is testament to the quality of the engineering 